Welcome to Sporadic Phantoms. My name is Robin. And I'm Stevie. We can tell you generally where we live. We're within proximity of Santa Barbara, California, and we're coming to you from our recording studio at The Sharing. And we'd like to see Share the Truth try to stop us. In our last episode, we came back to the investigation after a several month hiatus. Hi. Hi. Here we are. We still have a missing persons case on our hands. So that's the last time I saw him, several months ago. The police have essentially halted their investigation. Did you report it to the police? They haven't exactly been the best help. Yeah, figures. But Share the Truth is still out there, and Kyle could still be in trouble. Earlier today, several local businesses along Laguna Boulevard and the surrounding downtown area were attacked and looted by unidentified vandals. So we set up the Sporadic Phantoms Missing Persons Hotline Line and added documents to the Sporadic Phantoms dossier. If you have any information regarding any missing persons or tips or leads pertaining to our investigation, leave us a message. We also invited Kyle's parents to the studio for an interview. We're just waiting for him to come back home. But maybe he doesn't want to be found. <sighs> what else do you girls need to know? Because finding Kyle might just mean finding Share the Truth once and for all. We know it's been about a month since our last episode, but if you recall, our interview with Kyle's parents was scheduled for just about a week after we first spoke with his mom on the phone, so everything you'll hear in this episode happened on the day of the interview. Of course, the first thing we did that day was make sure our studio was comfortable and inviting. Then we sat down and figured we could get a head start on recording most of the episode before Faith and Bob arrived. We thought about editing out some of our planning, you know, logistical stuff between Stevie and I that normally we would probably edit out of an episode. But you know what? We left it in. Not only because we want to be transparent with you, but because that's how you'll get to hear just what happened that day and how. And you'll understand why and how the interview went the way it went. Where it's left us now, the new questions it's brought up for our investigation, and the harsh reality of just how risky this all is. Okay, before we get into it, question for you, Robin. Yes? Does Sporadic Phantoms pass the Bechtel test anymore? <laughs> of course it does. Literally all we've talked about so far is Kyle. We talk about plenty of other things. Sure. It's not like he's the main character of this whole thing. He's a lead. And we're going to have to talk about him a lot more this episode. Speaking of which, Faith and Bob should be heading down to the studio right about now. Those are Kyle's parents, by the way. Do we know if they're heading our way yet? I'm on it. Yep, that was Bob. They're on their way. Great. Let me again emphasize to you all what we're doing here. It's not that we're on any kind of manhunt. Listen, though we're really well informed, we don't know the actual identities of anyone in Share the Truth. Stevie and I and the members of the sharing have been through a lot. It's difficult to get across just how bad things are when news stories are being buried and forgotten and there's not a lot of information on the internet about Share the Truth. Except on the dark web. I mean, remember, there was a lot of talk about them and their escapades on secret forums and things. It's not like there's some small-time group of trolls. These guys have a reputation. Oh, yeah. Well, there used to be many more traces of their activities on the internet. There's just less information to be found about them now, especially information that can be relied on now that they know we're on to them. But please don't go to the dark web for the sake of this podcast. I think your point is that it's up to us to let our listeners know why this investigation means anything at all. Yeah. At this point, you need to remember that the only source for real information about Share the Truth is us. 
And I mean, to some of you, the first time you've ever heard of Share the Truth was from listening to Sporadic Phantoms. And you don't really have a connection with Kyle except from listening to Sporadic Phantoms. Uh, what is that? Like a parasocial relationship? Yeah, I guess you could say that. Something like that. And see, I think that's an issue. We need to get real. This whole thing needs to be just as real for you as it is for us. And that's why Faith and Bob are on their way right now. Okay, Robin, I have to be honest. I've been getting worried. I kind of feel like we're grasping at straws here. And it's not like we have a field of play anymore, so to speak. Like, where can we physically go to investigate right now? Right. And like, I'm sorry, guys, but this season might just be a little more boring than the last one because we need to have people come to us in the studio or just talk to us on the phone. (sighs) We're not relying on entertaining anyone, Stevie. Oh, yeah. Not at all. Yeah. Okay. I know what you mean, but we're just at the beginning. Our field of play happens to be a little limited for the time being. All we can do is try to make inroads to expand that field of play. Yeah, but the anxiety is real. We've discussed our concerns about this whole endeavor. We have some ideas brewing about what steps to take next, but we've just put out our first episode and we're seeing what comes up from the efforts that we've put in so far. And we can't let ourselves get into such a bleak headspace before we've done everything we possibly can. I guess you're right. It's not that I'm feeling, like, alone in this exactly. I mean, we have the sharing, which, thank God, we have that support, care, and love from them. We do. That's more than a lot of people can say. But when it comes to our listeners, coming back after a hiatus, I've been worried that some of them might be skeptical, distrusting, or, you know, they just don't care anymore. So sometimes it does feel like we could be alienated. Do you think it's true? I was almost feeling that way, Stevie. But, you know, over this past, what, it's only been a week. You know what? I realized, no, that's not true. You know why? Why is that? I've been hearing the initial responses from our listeners who have called into our hotline. And, Stevie, people are already starting to get it. Let me play some for you. Hey, Sporadic Phantoms. Big fan here. Just wanted to say that you guys really have your work cut out for you. I hope you can find Kyle soon. People just don't get that share the truth are really dangerous. I'll be keeping my eyes and ears peeled for any sign of him, Elizabeth, or Nancy. Good luck. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm I'm afraid that share the truth might be planning something really bad that's going to affect us all. God, I hope it doesn't come to that. Uh, society's already going down the tubes. And we can only hope that you find them quickly. Not to put even more pressure on you, but sporadic phantoms might be our only hope. Hi. Uh, I don't uh, think I can offer any tips on where Kyle might be, but I just wanted to voice some support more than anything. It just freaks me out and people go missing just because they got mixed up with the wrong people. And Actually, this isn't even the first time I've heard about this happening in Santa Barbara. Uh, A guy I used to work with moved there with his family a few months back. They'd been there just a couple weeks, and his son got kidnapped just because he listed something on Craigslist. There was a big social media campaign to find him. I followed it for a while, but they never found him. I mean, not as far as I know. But that's scary stuff. Anyway, I doubt there's any connection. I mean, Kyle's a full-grown adult, and this kid, David, was just a middle schooler, but It just goes to show you that you have to be really careful who you meet on the internet. If that helps you at all, great. But more than anything, I just want you to know I'm pulling for you and for Kyle. Best of luck, you guys. I'll admit that is pretty encouraging. See, people support us and what we're doing. And there's more where that came from. And, you know, they're right. We're doing the right thing here. That's not to say that there's not a very small but vocal minority who seems to want to try to tear us down. Yeah, hi. Uh, I know you guys are 
you know, worried about your friend Kyle and everything. But you've got to stop trusting the sharing. I mean, I can't believe you guys moved your studio into their basement. If you guys think you can trust them, you must have literal brain work. It's how it goes with anything. You know, any do-gooders are met with adversity to some degree. This isn't going to be a walk in the park, Stevie. I know. But those people who try to troll us, nothing they say is any basis in reality, right? Of course not. They see two strong women defying the status quo, fighting for what is right, and doing what the authorities have failed to do. <laughs> they can't fathom it. Exactly. Listeners, keep your calls coming in. The support is great. But also, yeah, if you see something, say something. The support is a nice morale boost and all, but it's true, especially if you've been listening to us for a while. Support also means that you are making the effort to do something. And that could mean getting the word out. That could mean asking people you know. That could even mean that you and the people you can trust get involved with the sharing so that we can have even more strength and numbers backing us up in tangible ways. We'll keep telling you what to do. Let's get out of this parasocial relationship a little bit, you know? Make it a little less one-sided. Okay, now that we've covered that, we're about to get to the meat of the episode. They should be here soon, right? If there was any news, I'd get a text. Well, relaying text messages doesn't exactly make for a very interesting episode, I'll just give them a quick call. For the sake of audio content. And transparency, CV. Faith, hi. Uh, what's up? Are you almost here? Hi, Robin. Uh, sorry, hon. We're on the 101. But there's an accident or well, construction up ahead or something. We're stuck in traffic. We'll have to be late. Oh, no. But uh, that, that's okay. Uh, is it moving at all, though? We just want to make sure that we're ready for you. Can you see up ahead? I don't know. I, I can't tell what it is. All I know is that we aren't moving and haven't been. It may take a while. It's really backed up. I don't want to inconvenience you and make you wait too long for us. No, no. Uh, we're flexible with time today, so no worries. Uh, we'll be waiting for you. Just take your time, okay? We'll see you soon. It'll happen today. We're definitely ready for them to come this afternoon, but if they don't come then, we can find another opportunity. It'll happen today. Yeah, well, I can't wait around all day for them. What if they don't want to reschedule for another day? What if there won't be another opportunity? I mean, then they could try to look for an opportunity to find a different route, a quicker route. What do you think? I can text Bob right now and encourage him to do just that. And I mean, do we really need recorded audio of all our logistical planning? You think it wouldn't be too much trouble for them? Do you want to interview them today? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead and text him about finding that quicker route. Okay, then. They'll do their best. Okay. But it's not going to happen instantly, so is there anything else we can talk about? Yeah, there is. Okay. Really quickly. Now, like we said, the vast majority of people support us. But some of you have brought up concerns about the advertisement in our last episode. Look, I get it. I do. Though we said very clearly that Sporadic Phantoms has no political affiliation and no affiliation with the content of the ad. Look, we can't tiptoe around anymore. And we don't have time for moralizing about the political correctness of our sponsors. Doesn't mean we support Trump or Frank's business practices. Last season we had a McDonald's ad, and we told you pretty much the same thing. So how is this different? Right? And this was an advertisement for a local, family-owned small business. 
And we know that it's most likely that the people who have brought up their concerns are well-meaning and support us, but are just confused. But I'm telling you, we have to get real. Sporadic Phantoms needs to exist, bottom line. Some of you get it. Thank you. We can only hope that as this season goes along, the gravity of the situation will sink in for the rest of you. Okay, did they end up finding an alternate route yet? No word yet, but I'll text Bob again. Maybe Faith isn't able to look at her phone right now. Could be. There. Oh, okay. Unexpectedly, traffic just might be starting to move. They could be here pretty soon. Oh, excellent. Let's make sure we're ready for them. Sporadic Phantoms will resume after these messages. Want to experience the best of Santa Barbara? Dive into adventure with Royan Island Duck Boat Tours. First, we'll take you on a historical tour of downtown Santa Barbara, and then make a splash as our amphibious vehicle morphs seamlessly from land to water for an exciting adventure on the high seas. See sea lions, dolphins, whales, and more. We'll head to Royan Island to lounge on an exclusive private beach before heading back to shore. The Royan Island Duck Boat Tour is one of Santa Barbara's must-see attractions. And Santa Barbara may be a beachside paradise by day, but by night, prepare to board Ghost Boat, Santa Barbara's scariest duck boat tour. As the sun sets on the dark waters out past Royan Island shores, you'll hear tales of a restless and vengeful spirit. Legend has it that long ago, an infamous pirate known as Captain Blackwood ruled these treacherous waters, along with his scurvy crew. But his insatiable greed for treasure led to his downfall when his own crew betrayed him, arr, testing him out onto a craggy, deserted island just beyond Royan Island. Consumed by rage, Captain Blackwood's spirit became bound to the rocks, seeking revenge from any who dared sail past his rocky grave. As we drift closer to the desolate shores, keep your ears open and your senses alert, for it is said that the wails and screams of Captain Blackwood's tormented spirit still echo through the night. Yes, you can really hear it. Prepare to embark on a two-hour journey that will haunt your memories forever. But beware, if you're not careful, you may find yourself trapped out on the rocks permanently. <laughs> Availability is limited, as this tour is not for the faint of heart and is not recommended for children. It's just too horrifying for any child to face. No delay! Get your tickets now and experience Santa Barbara like never before with Royan Island Duck Boat Tours. Did you text again? Obviously. Why don't you call Bob? Figure out what's taking them now that, now that traffic has started moving again? Why don't you call? I did just call again, but Faith doesn't appear to be responsive anymore. Well, neither is Bob. Then something's happening. Oh, that's... That's Faith. Hello? Faith? We can't make it. Hello? You're breaking up. I can't understand you. You're going to air this? Shh, let's just see. We were just a dad. Some strange men carjacked us. Tried to take me in. Whoa. And turn around off the road. Whoa, whoa. wait, Faith. What happened? Man with guns? Faith, whoa, are, are you okay? Uh, where are the strange men, Faith? Are you with them now? No, no, they're gone. I th think they were attacked by... I don't know what's going on. They're gone. Bob's okay, we're okay. He's here. He's talking with 911. So wait, you aren't with the strange men? No. Where did they go? Why aren't you with them? They're gone. They ran. They, they shot at the animals. Nothing. It was just a rampage over 
cars. Something happened to them? Please. Oh my God. I can't believe this is happening. So they're gone, but but you're still stuck on the highway? Yes? Is your car working? I, I think it's okay. Anything? No. I don't know. Uh, we might be... Get out of here. No. Don't move, Faith. Okay? Stay where you are. Don't move. Stevie and I are going to come down there right now and get you out of there. We're what? We have to go. We have to go. What exit are you by? Uh, 938. Okay, uh, listen, Faith, we're going to get you and Bob out of there, and there's no way that you can get out of there, right? Uh, Faith, everything is blocked. You'll just get more stuck, and those men might see you moving, and they'll try to chase you down, so it's not safe, right? Uh, but we have an off-road vehicle, so we can just pull up on the side of the road, and we can get you out of there. Off-road vehicle? We can't stick around. Uh, there, there's an off-road Don't go anywhere. Well, what are you waiting for? Let's go. Get your stuff. Well, what are you thinking? How do you expect we get there with the highway blocked off? It's as I said. If we drive along the side of the highway in an off-road vehicle, we can get to them in like 20 minutes. Uh, let's think. Do we currently have access to an off-road vehicle, Robin? <laughs> I'm not talking about... I'm talking about a Jeep, Stevie. Seriously? Yeah. We should be able to get close enough to the highway on a service road or something and then drive along the side of the road if we need to. Uh, by the way, listeners, the Jeep in question is sharing property. Uh, one of the perks of being a full member is that we have car sharing. It's a car. If something happened, and especially if Bob just dialed 911, the cops will get there before we can. They can take Faith and Bob out of there. I don't trust the cops to understand the importance of what we're doing here. Plus, they could be attacked by... Whoever attacked Faith and Bob. But whoever these guys are, they might not think we'd even be able to show up there. And Bob and Faith could really be in trouble. Who else can we rely on, Stevie? Clearly no one. And you're going to record us going there and doing this and put it in the show? Why not? With Faith talking all about how distressed she is from whatever happened? Yeah. Because it could have been share the truth. We don't know. We got in the Jeep and headed towards the outskirts of town, Stevie in the driver's seat. I couldn't get the sound of panic in Faith's voice out of my head. What were we about to run into? Whatever it was, would it have anything to do with the investigation? Or was it just bad luck? Were we about to just run into a huge, unrelated roadblock? Well, so to speak. We drove out of Santa Barbara proper, getting on the 101, but we didn't make it far. Our side of the road was slowing down to a crawl, and there was only the occasional car coming from the other direction. It looked like both directions were compromised. Cops were stationed up on the road ahead, directing cars to get off at a nearby exit. Well, we didn't want to do that. Just get onto the access road there. Okay, then. I knew this Jeep was the right way to go. See, this part of the highway wasn't wide. Two lanes each way, separated by an overgrown grassy median, surrounded by a mix of scruffy trees, open farmland and orchards. You could see the ocean far on one side, and Los Madres, far in the distance on the other, beyond all the farms. It was a little bit hilly. But the farms meant that there were plenty of small access roads running parallel to the 101, separated from the highway by just a thin, intermittent line of trees. So it wasn't too difficult to get ourselves off the road and onto one of those. Not the fastest route, but it was the only route to get us where we needed to go. As we drove, we saw more police and tow trucks go by. Soon we saw why. Here we go. Up ahead was the start of the jam, and no wonder things weren't moving. Cars were strewn in various directions, on the highway, on the median, across the whole width of it, looking a little like a bizarre and unsuccessful game of Tetris. There were police, fire trucks, and people standing around with looks of disbelief, some talking to the cops, 
and there was a long, long line of cars backed up for what looked like probably at least a mile. Nothing was flipped over or on fire, per se, and fortunately, it didn't seem to be like any kind of deadly horror show situation. But it was a little difficult to tell exactly what had happened. This is a mess. This looks like a six-car pileup or something, at least. Yeah, but hold up. Is it just me, or do not a lot of these cars look like they actually hit each other? From the front, anyway? The configuration doesn't make sense. Something's off. Well, they're still smashed up enough that no one's going anywhere fast. Those are a lot of vehicles to get out of the way. You think we'll find them in all this? Yeah, just, just keep going. But slow down a little. Her phone isn't getting good reception. What kind of car do they have? It's gray? <laughs> Thanks for the specificity. Faith? Bob? Oh, this is ridiculous. Bob! Faith! Oh, stop the car. Why? Just stop for a second. That could be them. Hey! Hey, get your hands off my car. Yeah, okay, okay, sorry. We're just looking for someone. <sighs> this will be moving before we can find them. We have to keep looking. Come on. Oh, Robin? Does that look like it could be them? Robin, there. Look. Where? Oh. I bet you that's where they are. Now that we were in the middle of the actual road, we could see it more clearly. Smoke. Further ahead into the standstill traffic. So that's where we headed. Back on the access road, we came across a couple gates with no trespassing signs, but we got through them. Or around them. Then the access road suddenly turned off to the right, out towards a field. No big deal. Good thing we brought a jeep. We kept going straight through the grass. You've got to be kidding me. What happened here? We made it. And this looked worse, a lot worse. There was another strange collision or something, somehow, in the middle of this sea of traffic. It looked unnatural. The front of an SUV was crunched downwards like a soda can. A burning slash nearly severed a nearby sedan. A van was smoking and on its side. There was a cop car already there, and a largish box truck with an open top pulled to the side of the road. This is where it happened. This is not good. Keep an eye out for them. Do you see them anywhere? This is bad, Robin. I can't get in touch with Bob, so you're going to have to try and figure out what happened with Faith. Who do you think caused this, Stevie? Look, they're not here. Just find out where they went. I bet you she'll pick up now. Oh, I'm getting through. Told you. Faith, we're here. Where are you? What does your car look like again? We were able to turn around and get out of there, Robin. Bob drove right over the median, and we're heading back to San Luis Obispo. What? They left. We said we were coming, Faith. We couldn't just sit there and wait for you. You have no idea what we've just been through. How? How did you get out? Somehow in the chaos, it cleared a path for us to squeeze out. How? 
It looks like a tornado went through here. But you just said that there were men with guns? Uh, what happened? Robin, please. I I've told you already we were attacked, and then they were attacked. I can't quite process it myself, but I just knew we had to get out of there. Who attacked them? Oh, I, I knew you wouldn't believe me when I told you. Why would you? I can't even believe it myself. I couldn't understand what you were saying, Faith. You were breaking up. Listen, I'm so sorry it didn't work out today, but we've just been through a nightmare and need to deal with this. But we can at least schedule another time for the interview, then? Oh, come on, Bob. Robin, just leave it already. <sighs> Let's go, Stevie. They went down the other side of the highway. Robin, it's not worth it. This whole plan is botched. This sucks. We'll get them another time. This is what happens when we don't handle things ourselves. We could have gone to their house for the interview. We'd risk getting caught up in this too. We have to be smart. We're going to have to take risks is what? We have to be ready for anything. <sighs> Let's just get out of here. Turning back to the Jeep, out of the corner of my eye, I noticed that the cop was standing and talking with someone, someone I recognized. Whoa, wait, Stevie, is that? That thing came down here too? Where is it then? Officer, I told you, there's just no way it was one of ours. I don't know where else it could have come from. Seems like you need to get a better handle of your animals. You want my help, right? Then stop giving me grief and let me do my job here. Hey, Dr. Green? Hey, we're cordoning off this area. Hold on a second, officer. Dr. Green, you remember me, right? Yeah, you're from... Spastic? Sporadic Phantoms. Sorry, I'm forgetting your name. Robin, and this is Stevie. She's also part of Sporadic Phantoms. You must have gotten caught in this? I should ask you what you're doing here with the police. I'm here because of the reason for this whole traffic jam in the first place. But you must have at least seen what happened over here, right? No. Well, actually, we kind of just got here. Okay. Well, I don't know if everyone stuck in this jam even knows what happened at the start of it. Or, or what people are saying happened over here, too. If you can believe it, people are calling in and saying that a loose elephant came through, stomping on cars on the highway. Excuse me? That's what caused the jam in the first place. They're saying people stopped for an elephant in the middle of the road, but then the elephant started charging, and here, here it looks worse. An elephant did this? Amazingly, I don't think anyone down there was hurt, but they're saying that the drivers of a couple of these damaged cars up here are unaccounted for, so we might be dealing with a different story over here. Ah, uh, it's, uh, really strange for an elephant to go stomping around the highway, right? Where is it now? That's just it. There's no sign of where it went. You'd think it'd have a harder time hiding. And it'd have to walk a mile to get over here, so you'd think people would have seen it coming and that we'd have found it already. Unless there's more than one. But it still doesn't make sense. Huh. This is when I know I need another coffee today. Anyway, that's why I'm driving up and down the highway with these cops. We're trying to find it and get it to safety. It's got to be around here somewhere, though it probably ran off into the brush or even the woods, where it might feel safer. Gone. Right. Of course. Like that tiger. Is there a reason why an animal like that would go on a rampage without regard for life? It's incredibly rare, but... It could happen if it's traumatized, or in a fight-or-flight state. They can charge, but only when it's absolutely necessary. Huh. You've been around a lot of these strange animal occurrences in general, Dr. Green. When they happen, you're always on the scene, right? I mean, it's a funny coincidence. Lots of exotic animals at the gardens, right? All in one place. Quite the collection. A good resource. The gardens has, what, tigers we know. How about gorillas? Yep. 
elephants, right? Yes, but don't get the idea that this one was from the gardens. Grizzly bears? Yep. And they must also have wolves. No wolves. Why wolves? I don't know. It's another animal in that general vein. No wolves? Huh. We don't have such a big collection of native animals at the gardens. Do you know much about native animals too, Dr. Green? Well, that's more my husband's area, but yes, of course. Your husband? He runs a wildlife rehabilitation clinic. Right, I remember you saying that. Dr. Green, we'd love to talk with you further about this. Dr. Green, we need you over here. Listen, I can't chat more. Really quickly, do you remember Kyle, the guy who originally contacted you about us interviewing you? Of course I remember him. Have you seen him around? Or talked with him lately? No. He didn't follow up with you. You didn't keep in touch? No. I haven't spoken to him since our interview. Dr. Green, do you think this could be connected with something bigger? You mean, like the kinds of things Kyle was talking about before? Yeah, maybe. I can speculate, but I don't have the answers right now. And I have a lot to deal with here. Thanks. We'll... We'll stop by soon, if that's okay. We will? I can't guarantee I'll be available. Dr. Green, we need you to assess this. Be right there! Listen, I gotta figure out what happened here and find this elephant. It's gonna be a long day. So, we're going to put all this in the episode. Just air it, who cares? Uh, you sure about that? I'll edit out anything that seems unairable. And if Share the Truth is listening, it doesn't matter. They already know what's going on. And the sharing. Stinton. Is this too much? Stinton doesn't listen to sporadic phantoms. What he and the sharing will appreciate are our eventual results. They'll see. And we can use this. So our listeners know what's going on too. Nothing to hide, Stevie, remember? Yeah. We can use this footage. So, this was really weird, right? Yeah, this kind of thing doesn't normally happen. This kind of destruction. Do you think it could be... In a weird way? Yeah. Share Share the the truth? truth? This is insane. But, hypothetically, suppose that all sorts of strange animals actually are involved in this whole thing. Do you think this means that there was something about the way Share the Truth operates that was right under our noses this whole time that we refused to believe before? So, Stevie, you're saying you think that they could be using animals for acts of terrorism? Well, that's hiding behind animal bodies to do their dirty work. That's horrible. That's animal abuse. And Faith sounded really confused about animals attacking some strange masked men, or men attacking the animals. But she didn't realize that it was actually those men who were trying to cause chaos by letting those animals loose. And now they're not only looting businesses, but causing accidents. Then they're not just trying to steal people's identities or money or cause chaos for its own sake. They really are violent. They're deranged. (laughs) Yeah, and this plan of theirs? You gotta admit, it was terrible. Not well thought out at all. Very amateurish. Because this would mean that Share the Truth planned to stop Faith and Bob from getting to the sharing by causing a super big and super obvious traffic jam on the 101 so that they'd be able to find them on the road and attack them? (laughs) These guys aren't as advanced or intelligent as they think. Like that wouldn't tip us off to what's really going on here. Hypothetically, it would mean that Share the Truth doesn't want us to get the word out about Kyle. I'd say so. I mean, yeah, if this is linked with Share the Truth. Hypothetically. Or not, hypothetically. We don't want to limit our thinking, Stevie. And if we follow this line of thinking, 
then it could mean that Share the Truth doesn't want him to be found. And if they're attacking his parents, then they probably are blackmailing him or have kidnapped him. At the very least, it means they're connected. They're in communication. It would mean that today wasn't a total loss. We learned something very important today, Stevie. Because they messed up. And now we know something that they didn't want us to know. That Kyle's definitely in trouble. And that he's definitely with them. That concludes Sporadic Phantoms Episode 13, The Obstruction. Tune in next month for Episode 14. In our next episode, we'll see just where these unexpected developments can take us. We'll, of course, analyze any new information we receive between now and then. And what else might Dr. Green know? Is there anything she's not telling us? Special thanks to K.A. Applegate, Avery Adams, Julie Becker, Sean Crum, Phaedra Eason, Steve Landis, Naomi McMillan, Abby Savoy, Torin, and Nate Varnado. And shout out to our newest Patreon supporters, Ian Buck, Lacey Bukta, and Luna Donaswara. Thanks to you, we were at least able to reimburse Kyle's parents for their gas and mileage. If you'd like to support our investigation, visit our Patreon or our Ko-fi page or check out our merch on Redbubble. If you have any information that may be relevant to the investigation, don't hesitate to call the Sporadic Phantoms Missing Persons Hotline at 805 805- Three six four two two five one, or you can email us at sporadicphantoms at gmail.com. If you'd like to engage with us and other listeners, you can tweet at us or join our Discord server. All these links and any updates to the Sporadic Phantoms dossier can be found on our website, sporadicphantoms.com. This was scary and absurd, but I'm beginning to think that Maybe we were wrong before. What if this isn't a coincidence? What if this just opened up our field of play just a little? And if we were to follow this line of thinking for a moment, it would mean that we would need to be on the lookout for any kind of strange animal activity. And of course, that our listeners should call us immediately if they see anything of the sort. Yeah, even you. (laughs) 